Hey, hey, hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel and good morning because it's very early in the morning for me. Yes, so we have all, oh, I assume we have all been hearing about the new Hunger Games book and movie because who gets a movie deal before the book is even out? Suzanne Collins apparently. Uh, I mean, the Hunger Games franchise has been going very well, so I mean, why not? Why not? Why not get on that train? Good for her, honestly. Good for her. Anyway, this new book and movie is supposed to be uh, a new prequel. Prequel number two, as it were. And I believe, uh, I believe the book is coming out in like February, March 25, and then the movie's coming out sometime in 2026. That is the information I have currently. Um, and I believe it's said to be Hamish's story in the arena and whatnot. So that is sure to be an interesting play. Um, I mean, I'm I'm not sure about seeing a, a different person, a different actor playing Haymitch other than Woody Harrelson, um, because he's just Haymitch now. Uh, so that's gonna be interesting, but not the point why we're here. Um, so a prequel number two, um, I have yet to read or see prequel number one, which is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snake. The reason why we're here, <laughs> so, me being me, um, I didn't just want any of the old covers or any formats of this book because um, I have these. So I have, um, I'll just show them one by one. I have these covers, my desk is so full, Ooh, I have these covers of The Hunger Games and there is a cover that actually matches this set. Now, if it's the same size, we're gonna see, because it took some time. It took some time, and I finally managed to track it down. Um, it's not new. <laughs> it is secondhand, so yes, I did that. I do do that sometimes. It's not my favorite mode of buying books, especially online, where I can't physically see it before I pay for it. Not my favourite, but I don't really have a lot of, first off, I don't have a lot of bookstores in general around me. I definitely don't have a lot of second-hand bookstores around me to go check. And if it were, yeah, highly doubt there'd be a lot of English books. I managed to find a copy that was decently priced, by the way. I paid like... How much did I pay for it? For the book and the postage of the book, I think I paid like five or six pounds, which is okay. <laughs> um, especially if it is the way it looked to be. So let's open it, shall we? Um, this person has used regular desk tape, I see. Not the sturdy kind, but it seems to have done the job um, for the packaging, as I can't even get it open. I'm also trying to do this and not flash my address that's very large on this other side. Let's, you know, let's not do that. So, okay, it's folded up. It's, it's folded up. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna need to, okay, well I can't send it back in this box if I want to do that, um, okay, this tape though, may not be as sturdy as, you know, packaging tape, but, definitely seems to have done the job, oh, they've put, okay, they've also put like, little silk paper on, on, on over it, all over it. So, this is the cover. <laughs> These are some odd sized paper. Um, anyway, so this is the cover um, that I was looking for. I can see it's not gonna be the same size. 
that's okay. But they match, they match. Technically it's a prequel, so being a different size, it's not gonna bother me too much because uh, yeah. But anyway, let's check it out. So yeah, it's got some, but that's, that happens when you just pick up a book from the store. Um, it has definitely been read. Oh, okay, let's take that off. Because we're going to read it anyway. I got, it's got some wear and tear down there as well. Um, that's very cool. Hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, but it's got the mark. From what I can see, it's not been written in. Oh, I think someone read to this page. Didn't continue because it's cracked in this spot, but that's fine. We can deal with that. Looks good. Um, yeah. So we're gonna read this book in this vlog, and yeah, it's definitely cracked that, but that's fine. It's not. It's not something that would bother me as well too much because I do sometimes accidentally crack my books my my hardback book size that way but <laughs> yeah I think they've definitely not finished the book <laughs> I don't care I have the cover I want it in a hardback sure it is slightly bigger than the others but that's fine also, I'm just realizing now that prequel number two might not even have a cover that <laughs> matches these. So that's going to be fun for me. <laughs> um, we're going to read and I'll be checking in. And then I think I'm going to try to set it up anyway. But I want to watch the movie if, I, if it's available to me. I'm going to have to look that up too. I have not planned this at all. Anyway, um, I want to try to watch the movie in this vlog as well. So we'll see how I'm going to do that. If I can, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'll check back with you when I've read some of this and we'll see. That should be the title of this video. We'll see times infinity. I haven't even made it off the first page and I'm like, Tigress is his cousin. Tigress, who later helps uh, Katniss and stuff, is that is that the same person? What? Uh, what? <laughs> not even half the not even half the first page, and I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> the broken page. Um, I've only read the first chapter, but so. As uh, probably a lot of us um, that's read Hunger Games or, I mean, seen the movies for that matter as well, but know the story from before. I think we all have this preconceived conception of Snow um, as, you know, a bad guy. And <laughs> this first chapter... First off, there is a little, like, sprinkle of, you know, the bad guy we know and love, <laughs> if, if you wanna. Um, but the, the whole first chapter is, oh, poor Snow, he is a poor man, poor family, he, he isn't as fancy as everyone else, and then, you know, you have to pretend to still be rich, and oh, well, he's so poor, he can't eat. I just found it annoying. I'm like, Snow is a terrible person. <laughs> and now we're going through a, oh, poor Snow, he's poor. I can't. I can't. Ah. Oh my god, he got District 12. Ah. So. <laughs> the worst district in the world. Um, so, they, whoever they are, the, uh, I don't know, head game makers or whatever, the people in charge of the capital. I was like, District 1? No, capital. 
um, they've decided now that it's year 10 of the Hunger Games and uh, they need to like spice things up. So they have people from the capital being uh, mentors to the tributes. My cats are going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yes, this is insanity. And Snow, um, he got District 12. He got the girl in District 12. Poor him. He was overlooked for all the good ones. And, oh, District 12 is the one who dies in, like, five minutes within the arena. Wah! <laughs> He's so whiny, okay? This character is such a whiny little asshole. And I don't know if I would think this as much as I do. I mean, it's it comes across on the text, but I don't know if I would think it if I didn't know Snow from like The Hunger Games, if like this was the first book I read. So I don't know, probably, because the, the text kind of gives it off, that impression. Anyway, <laughs> that was one part I wanted to update about. The other one is, so um, Lucy, the, the girl from District 12, she, um, she makes a whole spectacle of the whole thing and I bloody love her and she hasn't really spoken yet, but she sings a song. She and um, like the, someone in the capital starts singing and everyone takes off and she's like grabs the mic and starts singing stuff I, I really hope this song is in the movie because that was hilarious um yeah i really hope i think i think it might be um if not the exact one then abbreviated version of it i don't know um but that was funny uh I, and i can't wait to learn more about her but i still fucking hate snow <laughs> He's a whiny little asshole, okay? <laughs> Much like me, but I'm not evil, <laughs> okay? I'm not evil. I haven't killed people. Snow has. <laughs> I know Snow is a fictional character and I'm a real person, but still, it counts. <laughs> oh, he might not have killed people yet, but he has in the future, okay? <laughs> it counts. <laughs> okay, so... Um, the way Katniss arrives in the capital is not how they used to do it. <laughs> Basically, they transport all the, all the tributes from the district in cattle carts. <laughs> so there's no windows and such, there's no fancy business, they're basically just thrown in a box and shuttled off to somewhere. And then, and then, when they do arrive in the cat capital, they're picked up from this train station in, I don't know, trucks and scooted off to the Sioux. They're just thrown in cages at the Sioux. Yeah, there's no fancy business about here. They don't even feed the, the tribute. So, uh, so one of the other mentors, um, who used to live in a district, by the way, but one of the other mentors like brings a backpack full of sandwiches and stuff and tries to feed the tributes. <laughs> it's kind of cute, but also, wow. Um, yeah, there's no fanciness. There's no like glitz and glamour to any year, uh, any anything of, of sorts. Also, um, so the mentors are not supposed to, um, I don't know, the rules, the rules are very vague. Um, but the mentors don't actually meet the, um, the tributes until like later when they're gonna present them. Um, they have like five minutes to present them or something, I don't know. <laughs> but Snow uh, shows up at the train station and then he's like goaded his grandmother to um, give him a rose to give to the tribute <laughs> you know like snow does because apparently his grandmother like cultivates roses on the rooftop garden or something it's her thing um but you know it's kind of snow's thing as well but anyway he's just standing there at this train station with this with this flower with this rose 
<laughs> to the tribute. Honestly, it's like The Bachelor now. I give you this rose, do you accept it? Um, but Lucy, she doesn't actually accept the the rose. Um, she picks a couple of petals of it and, you know, scurries off. Um, I'm liking Lucy. I'm liking Lucy a lot. <laughs> she's, um, she's giving me the kicks and giggles and yeah, yeah. She's definitely a showman. That's for sure. That is for sure. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, we are now on part two. Um, so there's that. Uh, I am about to start chapter 14. And the Hunger Games are just beginning. Um, but rewind a little bit. So <laughs> we've been like seeing Snow and Lucy integrate. <laughs> integrate? <laughs> we've been seeing Snow and Lucy interact throughout, uh, but mostly it's um what snow gets up to on the in the behind the scenes as the were things have happened so there's been bombings and i'm like who's bombing who who's bombing you and snow kind of ended up in the hospital for a little bit it was it was minor injuries he's fine he's fine he's off to do some evil deeds uh well maybe not yet <laughs> i don't know what he does in this book so I uh, but he does evil deeds in the future, so that's not a spoiler-ish. So there's been bombing, but who's bombing them? Who's bombing them? And so this is the 10th uh, Hunger Games, so it's all very new and such, but they're still developing things and whatnot. And Snow and among uh, Snow is among uh, several kids, I guess, um, that's kind of in school and one of the like things to do is to be a mentor to uh the tribute and i'm not sure if like all the kids in the school actually got a tribute or if it's just a certain few but yeah i don't know but apparently being in school then you can go up to do other things in the government system and whatnot um there's not too much information about this and honestly I'm not sure it actually matters uh, as a whole. This book I feel is mostly to see how Snow became who he is in The Hunger Games. The, the actual, the big series. We've had bombings, we don't know who, or well, I don't know who, if it, were, if it was said I definitely missed it. Ah uh, yeah, so uh, they kind of got an ex assignment and of course Snow is the one that came up with the gambling on the tributes idea and um, you know sending the tributes gifts and stuff um, for whatever reason. Of course he's the one that came up with that. Of course! And of course they implemented it in this game because they are running out of ideas apparently. Ten years! Well nine years prior uh, they've, I don't know what they've been doing, but they've been doing something, and, yeah. We already know it's not the glitz and glamour like that we first see when we enter the Hunger Games. Um, it's not very fancy, it's all throw the tributes in the animal cages, have them be watched in the snoo, 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 have people being able to go to the zoo to watch the tributes. It's madness. It's madness, and, I mean, Yes, it makes sense because the tributes are treated as animals being like taken and thrown into this game where they're supposed to kill each other. For, for whose enjoyment? We don't know yet, really, because uh, it seems to be it hasn't been up until now seems to not have been the same kind of enjoyment as they seem to be having in the the big series so now they've like implemented that you need to it's it's mandatory to watch the hunger games in all the districts you can't skip out on them that's what we find out in the first book we find out that um everybody needs to watch it 
whether you want to or not, that's just what you do. Because what else is there? Not a lot. It's kind of interesting to say, because the capital government, the, the capital, let's say just say the capital. So the capital isn't as rich as it seems to be in later books. Um, or the first books, <laughs> it's confusing. Uh, in later years, whereas here seems to be like they've recently had this war and I mean it's been like 10 years since whatever made them start the Hunger Games. I'm not going to go into it because that's just a lot and me have to, to remember is not making my brain work. Anyway, <laughs> so there's a lot of things from the original Hunger Games, the original book, the original series in the future uh, in this story that we just, I feel, at least for me, I feel like I've just assumed it's always been that way. Um, but apparently it hasn't because there's a lot of new things like popping up in this book and it's like, well, Snow came up with this idea and I'm like, you know what? I mean, that does, it makes sense because the things he's coming up with aren't in inherently bad it's just the way to get more people to watch the hunger games it's the where you can bet on the tributes it's like gambling yes get some gambling in here because that's so good but it makes people addicted to it and i mean that's what the the, the capital the big the big evil dudes uh which later we just see as snow um, that's what they want. They want you to watch and that's it. I think that was all the updates. Oh, yeah So, um, they shared a little kiss Ooh, It's interesting though because I've heard that Snow like falls in love with Lucy uh, and basically he loses the love of his life or this book will tell you how he loses loses the love of his life. That's that's basically all I've heard. And so far, the only like lovey dovey ness I've gotten from them is that she sang this song about a long lost love, and he was like, "No, I don't like this. I'm getting jealous. You are singing about another dude, and I'm you belong to me." <laughs> basically, that's what goes through his head. And uh, and th and then they share a kiss, and that's it. I'm not feeling the love yet. I'm not feeling the love, but we'll see, I guess. Um. So anyway, Lucy's just entered the arena, and by the by, not all the tributes are actually alive when the games have started. So a lot of the tributes have already been killed outside of the games before the games even started. So it's like. Um, hello? <laughs> Is this even allowed? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna continue because I want to know what happens in the arena. Um, we are on, I mean, I've only read that much and it's this much left. It's a little more than half the book. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's the theme of this video. We'll see. Okay, I'm on chapter 15 now and I just have to enter here because so um, one of the other mentors, uh, Sejanus, he was originally from District 2 but his family bought their way into the capital because once upon a time you could do that apparently. I don't know if you could do that still, but anyway, um, he, Sejanus, he um, decided to enter the arena because that seems like a good idea. Um, <laughs> so his his thought is to like enter the arena, get one of the uh, tributes to kill him to make a statement. Except like for the game makers, they're like, well, we don't like this, so they get snow. <laughs> they get Snow to go into the arena to get him back out. So Snow's in the arena. Like, hello? 
This is the most stupid thing I've ever seen. But also it's funny. So <laughs> so when Snow goes in, he's like, oh, they didn't have the uh, have enough time to nail enough hat. They didn't have enough time to make a proper thing. Uh, so it's like basically the, the, the wall of the arena, it's basically like a theater prop, like a set. Um, so if you look the, look like slightly to the left you're gonna see like the outside and they don't want the camera seeing that so they don't point the cameras this way it's like what is this is this a joke is this a joke <laughs> no but it's basically just it, it's make-believe it's not real <laughs> i'm having the best time Part three. So, excuse the dishwasher in the background, but it's on and it's on. Anyway, so, part three. Backtrack a bit. So, when Snow was in the arena getting his friend Janus, Sir Janus out, he killed a dude. He killed a tribute because a lot of the tributes started attacking them. Um, and afterwards, the gamekeeper tells him that they could have gotten him out, but they wanted him to do the kill. Why? What has Snow done thus far to have to do that kill because they wanted him to? He's, so far, he's been a good guy. He's not really done anything that should give anyone a reason to punish him in any way. And not massively anyway. I mean, making someone, making, someone making you kill someone, that's a massive punishment. Anyway, he's got his first taste of blood didn't like it so um part three the games are over and it seems that lucy won and snow is getting like everything he's ever wanted basically but like just before the chapter ends he is like taken into a room to who was it who was it so in the room it's just dean Hagenbottom, and in front of him is um, an academy napkin stained with the grape crunch, uh, his mother's silver compact, and a dingy white handkerchief. Basically, all things connecting him and Lucy to each other, and uh, basically telling the gamekeepers, gamekeepers are telling Snow that they know you helped her, and now we're gonna punish you, so now he's a peacekeeper. Now he's the newest peacekeeper, and that's apparently how you, you punish people, making them a peacekeeper. Uh, end of part two. We'll see what part three, the peacekeeper, um, has in store. I think there's only like, wanna say like 11 or 12 chapters left, or something like that, so it's not a lot. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what this has in store for us and um, Yeah, basically we'll see Okay, I finished the book So the the whole third part of the book uh, I finished in one go because I was just too invested to stop uh, Also, I was in bed, so I didn't want to get up anyway <laughs> so where do we live off? We Snow becomes peacekeeper and he chooses to go to District 12. Guess why? Because he's looking for Lucy. And because Lucy just kind of mysteriously disappeared after the the Hunger Games. I mean there there were wasn't really like a victor ceremony or anything. Everything just went black. <laughs> so we don't know what happened when we when we start the, the 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 third part. Snow goes to 12. He volunteers to go to 12 <laughs> just cuz um because of Lucy obviously. And so he he doesn't know if she's there, if she's alive or anything, but he goes there to find her because he loves her. Yeah? He loves her. <laughs> And soon thereafter, when he finds her, Sejanus also comes to 12 as a new peacekeeper. Like, dude, you have everything you need. What the fuck are you up to? Who knows? Basically, Sejanus is doing things and Snow is being very sus of him. And it turns out, lots of things. So he's lying about lots of things. He's he's kind of planning to run away with this, I don't know, rebel group. And, and Snow kind of gets him to confess and sends 
but through one of the Mockingjay thingies um, and sort of like records Sejanus saying all these things that he's about to do, most of the things, and and Snow sends this Mockingjay Jabberwocky thingy. Is it a Jabberwocky or is it a Mockingjay? No, it's a Jabberwocky. One of them. He sends the birdie off to the capital to you know, the evil game makers, and eventually that leads to Sejanus getting killed. But yeah, no, he's innocent of everything, but he does get like a commendation, um, like a promotion, so now he's gonna go to the fancy ass school and stuff um, and to become whatever, because everything was just planned this way and you know Dr. Gaul didn't actually want him to stay as a peacekeeper because she'd because they'd invested too much in Snow so Snow was only like off for the summer and then he was gonna come back and do whatever. Sure I think the narrative changed there for Dr. Gaul and things but sure if you want to say that fine anyway <laughs> that's basically that thing but back to district 12 so uh snow finds lucy they set up start off this relationship that's kind of been boiling and whatever and as this relationship is going so she does a lot of singing and stuff in district 12 which is also part of the reason it's later when Katniss is there, uh, it's banned. Music is banned. <laughs> yeah, so many things. <laughs> so many things. Um, but anyway, so Snow is basically j just jealous of everything because uh, Lucy belongs to him. It's, it's you know, uh, the ex-lover thingy, um, he he's kind of around and he's like, you should run away with me, Lucy. And Lucy's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, but Snow is like, you talk to him? What? How dare you? <laughs> he's so possessive of her and so jealous of like everything ev and everyone around her. It's like, well, we can definitely see your behavior in like later, later life um, showing itself right now. <laughs> they eventually kind of decide to run away together and they, I think it's actually like the cottage or building or whatever that we later see Katniss in, in Hunger Games. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. Besides the point, um, they sort of go there to like reg re regroup because <laughs> the rebels and such that uh, Sejanus was gonna go away with, they've been collecting things um, and stashing them away. So I'm pretty sure it was there they'd done that because it was easily not findable. <sighs> Uh, Snow and Lucy goes there, regroup, and he's like, ooh, this uh, running away life is not really for me, I'm not really comfortable, you know, I want a bed, a roof over my house, I need the fancy things in life, you know, and they have a little chat. <laughs> He's, he doesn't say that to Lucy, by the way. But they have a little chat, and he's like, yeah, I've killed three people, and Lucy's like, three? Who's the third one? Because you kill that that one guy in in the arena, and then you killed another one um, while protecting Lucy. So who's the third one? Yeah, who is the third one? It's a Janus, but you know. <laughs> and Lucy starts like putting other things together, and she's like a bit sussy of him. Um, so she she goes off for a bit, and and Snow's like. Yeah, I, I need to put this in the ground. Yeah, this running away life isn't for me and Lucy knows too much. Ooh, we can't have that. So he kind of um, pulls up one of the weapons, the, the guns around and goes after Lucy. Yeah, presumably the love of his life goes off and intends to kill her. Now, we don't actually know what happens to Lucy. That's sort of an open-ended kind of thing. Um, not even Snow knows what happens to her, but I, I wanna think that 
Snow wants to believe that he killed her uh, because that kind of sorts things out for him that loose end that is Lucy but she's, he's also very happy to let everyone think that she just ran away and you know as long as she stays away he's cool with that I don't know will we see anything from her in the future I don't know under a different name maybe I don't know I don't know um so yeah um, basically, uh, Snow goes back to the capital and he, <laughs> so, so, um, the Plinths, um, Sir Janus's parents, they kind of sort of adopt him in a way. They're like, well, we don't have a son anymore, so we're just going to spend our money on you. And he's like, yes, give me all the money. I want all the money. Um, they like buy the Snow's uh, apartment um, and like so they don't have to sell because they were in the middle of having to sell that because you know dirt poor and all and they they like pay for new things for him and he's like yes we're just gonna merge the, our families now. I'll have my Snow name and I'll have your money. Basically he's he's very sinister isn't he? Yeah. You know, um, Dean Higg Higginbottom, no, Highbottom, um, one of the game makers. So there was Dr. Gaul and there was Dean Highbottom. Basically, the uh, Dean Highbottom, he was very, uh, like, sour with Snow all along. And there were, wasn't really a reason for it because Snow had, hadn't really done anything to upset the Dean. Um, but it turns out... Uh, Dean Highbottom, he holds a grudge, a very long grudge, a grudge that he had with Snow's father. Yes! So, on an evening ten so years ago, uh, I'm gonna say more than ten years ago, before the Hunger Games, Dean Highbottom and Snow's daddy, so they were just out drinking and they were spitballing things like, how would you punish someone without actually punishing them and making it like a very big punishment, you know, all that jazz. And so they sort of came up with this idea together. Uh, Dean Highbottom's all like, I was just too drunk. I didn't actually mean any of these things to like set to come true and all that. But Snow's daddy, he like wrote up this whole proposal and sent it on his merry way to Dr. Gaul uh, because then later Dr. Gaul has used Dean Highbottom as like the creator of the Hunger Games. Yes, you know, yeah, you heard it right. Snow's daddy and a bit of Dean Highbottom, they created the Hunger Games. It all comes back to Snow, doesn't it? And everything. What? <laughs> So basically, that's why Dean Highbottom is sour with Snow, because of Snow's daddy. Honestly though, um, in like short review-ish of the book, um, I really liked it. I didn't necessarily think it was needed in any way, but uh, we do get some answers and stuff for events. Um, that we know in from the Hunger Games have happened, but we don't know the reason behind them. Like, um, for example, so Dr. Gaul had to erase all of the 10th Hunger Games because of the cheating and uh, all that thingy imaging. So Lucy, the winner of the 10th Hunger Games, she's now uh, like a ghost girl. She doesn't, in 10th Games never happened. Yeah. Um, so now we know that. No, but the, the, it was actually a lot of fun going back into the Hunger Games world, as it were, like from a different character's point of view, albeit Snow, who is not a great person, um, but you sort of go through the motions with him, you kind of saw, sort of see how he becomes the man he later is. Um, because he's not really that kind of person to start with. He's a bit whiny and, you know, spoiled, but he, he's not like a killer per se until events are set in motion. And now I kind of want to reread The Hunger Games. And I have no intention of doing that right now. So 
there's that. Uh, I am stupidly excited about watching the movie for this book. Um, and also, prequel number two, Haymitch's story. Also, again, who the hell is going to play Haymitch besides Woody Harrelson? I guess I'll sign off, so thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.